old brother, I feel like I'm having some deja vu. A big move up into June 2023, and now we're having a bullish consolidation taking place. Was today's down day in the markets just a fake out before we go ahead and move up higher? Well, if you remember 2022, we had that big move up into June, and then we had a bullish consolidation and three very vicious down days in the the market. That's what we're going to be discussing on today's Stock Market Brief show. If you're new here, well, welcome to the show. We use technical analysis and intermarket market analysis. We do Monday through the Friday. So make sure to subscribe if you like this type of content and hit that thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. Timestamps are in the description if you are on YouTube. If not, welcome because I also post the full videos on Twitter. We're going to hop back into the performance section. Now, the difference really between right now and where we were last year is this. Well, we're in a pre-election year. In pre-election years, you typically have more bullish price action versus not a pre-election year, right? When you include all the other data, you actually have more of a move down. And that's what we actually saw during this time. So bullish, it's looking good. It's consolidating. It's okay to have a down day. Now we just need to be a little bit more tactical in our approach. So we're going to be getting into some shorter term charts to really help hone in on these index products. Now, if we take a look at performance today, energy led the way, which helps what? It helps the small caps, right? A lot of energy names in the small caps. Financials managed to be green too. That's also a big help to the small caps up 2.4%. We're going to talk where that is on the IWM and how that looks now. Dow Jones was unchanged. S&P 500 was rather unchanged too, despite seeing technology down a 1.49%. We said yesterday, you got to be a little bit more careful on the tech area because it's ran a little hot, got to pull back, got to consolidate. Those type of runs, they don't last without digestion. It just doesn't happen. They pull back, they do something. You can see that really here in the heat map. If it's pretty just bifurcated market, you split the screen down. You got yin over here and yang over there all this red and then all this green okay so microsoft down a whopping three percent nvidia was crushed i was trying to scalp this one intraday very difficult to do so today from the long side but managed to break even there google down 3.78 percent and amazon 4.25 percent down pretty wild okay we're gonna hop into the s p 500 now yesterday we talked about potentially coming up into 431.73 well, we did not crest into a new high for 2023 territory, but we're one day separated as it stands still. So this, I still think there's cards on the table for this as we're holding above the quarter date, we're above the year to date. Even if it wants to take a little bit more of a break, that's totally fine. We do have this gap below us. Okay, so if this low starts getting taken out, well, then we might be able to look here for a level of support. Gaps, once they're closed, can tend to act like levels of support. But remember, a lot of volume was traded in here. And if you think of that as a bell curve where you see your point of control right there in the center, sometimes these levels act as magnets and price can get pulled right back in to that vicious channel that we've been just really in for the last, uh, you know, it took like a month to get out of it, maybe more. Take a look at the S&P 500, the SPY on the 15-minute time frame. Okay, we got a little bit of a move higher this morning, but it all happened to fade. And, you know, because of tech, obviously, because everything else was doing decently well. Some good breath came into the market. But what are we doing? Well, now we're ping-ponging just like tech was the other day between the month to date and the week to date. And the five-day moving average is currently holding as a level of support. We did not tag the daily expected move for the SPY. So going into tomorrow, the expected move is 424.18 to the downside, 428.92 to the upside. And then we have our weekly expected moves here. Um, once again, if you don't know what those are, think of them as bell curve. It's it's implied volatility uh, calculation. It's, it's, it's forward-looking risk, what the options market is pricing in as far as risk going into tomorrow, and then what they price in as far as risk going for the week. And there's a 68% chance that it finishes within those expected moves so it's all about risk management so that's a good statistic to know there we're going to look at the nasdaq 100 so this is the one that came off pretty hard today 
as you can see on bigger volume. So it does act as a distribution day. Very interesting to note that now the distribution days are starting to build back up again. Um, you could see on down days or, you know, when we get faded, you have a little bit more increased volume, including today. So it's just something to pay attention to. Like I said, these type of moves, like they don't just go, keep going and going and going and going. They, they eventually have to digest, especially in these larger index products. We still have that gap right here that could very well be filled. Um, remember, I want to take you back to seasonality chart. Okay. Remember uh, 2022. Okay. 2022, we got hit to the downside. Now we're going consolidating sideways. And I want to just call out we're in day one, two, three, four, five. Tomorrow is day six. Okay. So if we look at day six over here and we just take a line and go up, that actually you can see that we called out, right? Price actions coming down. Boom, into the six. And then what, from a pre-election year standpoint, we actually start to see markets go up. Now, that's not the case if it wasn't a pre-election year, right? When you include more data, that's when you see some more significant movement. So did we just potentially, you know, is it a one day, two day, you know, who? this is just a guide. It's not like cold, hard facts that we know and forecast what's going to take place tomorrow. But it is interesting to just kind of see how this does play out there. So if we take a look at the 15 minute time frame, this one did get below the daily expected move today and it closed outside of it, um, almost tagging its lower weekly expected move. So this is within striking distance. If we start getting below that 345.59 is the lower daily and above that is a 352.05. That's the upper daily expected move. That's the lower daily expected move. I, I think I said upper down here, but lower daily expected move, upper daily expected move. Now we were ping ponging back and forth. Boom right? We got upside of it. Boom. A little bit of a bull trap right there. Got back in. And guess what? We got beneath the, the month to date. We're below the week to date. We're below the five day moving average. They're all starting to curl down. So what does this mean? Now the bears are more in control. Now, like I said yesterday, this is not where I'd want to short into the you know lower weekly expected move. Um, this is, you know, it's just something that I don't like to do. I like to wait for price to move up and then show us a new lower high that would be more ideal because as price even if it comes all the way up here bulls are going to be like we're back in town baby but then the five day moving average could be curling back over you have a month to date that could potentially act as resistance and the week to date okay so you have a lot of now overhead resistance on a high volume break to the downside so be skeptical on moves but you want to see how price responds now if price starts building a base and then we start breaking out to the upside later into the week, then that would be more bullish as we reclaim these um, anchored VWAPs and the moving average, okay? But as it stands now, you gotta be a little bit more on guard. You can see here we came back within the quarterly expected move, right? We we're outside of it when we talked about that, the dashed line 68% of the time, right? Well, we're back within that as it stands now with a lot of time left in the month. Dow Jones, so this is one that we said we're a little bit leaning more, a little bit more bullish on as it stands where we're still below the neckline. We're still above the quarter day and the year to day anchored VWAPs. So as it stands now, I, you know, it still looks really good as it's consolidating sideways. So if the seasonality plays out for a pre-election year and we see a move out, that would be quite good. But if we start getting back below the quarter to date or back beneath the year to date anchored VWAP, once again, be more cautious, right? It's all about risk to reward. So if that's your risk, your potential reward for you know a full measured move is up to here 360 well then that's pretty darn good and yes even if price were to come out here and then come down you'd still want to manage risk on how price you know if it comes all the way up here and your stop's still here right you might want to consider updating your stop maybe you want to follow the quarter to date up if that's the case um and so forth there's multiple ways you can do that that's up to you 15 minute time frame we're still actually down on the week so we opened up right around here right? And we're sitting here above the week to day anchored VWAP. You can see price is kind of just coiling sideways. It'd be nice to get above right over here. And then it could shoot to go test this. If we pop up there, let me pop up there like that, back test, boom. And then we can be off to the races and try to go for that upper uh, weekly expected move. Now, if we start getting beneath it, be a little bit more cautious. Okay. Comes test the five day month to date. If we start breaking below that, obviously it opens the door to still head down to the lower uh, weekly expected move. And if we really start breaking down to next week, we have this gap and the gaps can potentially act as levels of support as well. So a couple of levels there to pay attention to. Russell 2000. Okay, we had some follow through here as well on big volume. So this is looking pretty darn strong 
overall, now we are coming into the all-time high anchored VWAP, which we said about 187 to 190. Well, we tagged it sooner than we thought. Okay, and we're coming into this prior price action. So the move, right, even if it presses up further, just understand we're all together in this sideways chop range. And as we get to the upper range, we get faded back down to the lower range. So understand that if you are a range trader or in your long, you might want to consider profit taking here um, and then look to see if price pulls back, consolidates, and then starts to make a stronger move. It's also outside of its weekly expected move with a negative divergence on the RSI. It is above the week to date, month to date, and the five day moving average. So if price starts coming back in, start to look to see if it potentially reconnects with the uh, week to date moving average and or the month to date. Because even if it were to come in a lot, right, it could just be consolidating to potentially head higher as well. Let's go on and look at the monthly expected move for IWM. I just want to call out that we are trading outside of the monthly expected move and we're in the red shaded area. The red shaded area is a measured move. It's a measurement from the all time high down 20%. So if we're in the red shaded area, it means we're still in quotes bear market territory. Um, that's how I guess, you know, Wall Street says what's a bear market is minus 20% from the, from the high. We're down there, um, so we're almost outside of it, it looks like, but just understand that we're outside of the monthly expected move. Quarterly expected move is up here, more towards 195. Let's look at some indicators. Okay, so energy, right? Uh, the uh, bullish percent index for energy. We had a bullish divergence, okay? And we started moving up. Now I just wanna call out that we're moving now into overbought conditions as energy stocks have been moving. I'm telling you this now because, well, one of the big things helping drive IWM has been the energy sector. So overbought can stay overbought for quite a while. That's totally fine. This can continue to press up. This can get to more overbought conditions and the IWM can go higher too, okay? But just be aware that last time we were there was right here and then the market continued off, okay? Um, BP, COMP, Q, so the NASDAQ composite, overbought condition. We talked about that one yesterday. BP, NYA, so the NYSE, Okay, we're seeing a nice solid move there in the NYSE as we got that bullish crossover in the summation index. Not quite there yet, but it's almost an overbought condition. And then the technology sector, just following up on this, we talked about the bearish divergence, right, on the RSI right here. It's basically the opposite of energy. This is coming off. Meanwhile, energy, boom, has been moving up from that bullish divergence. If we take a look at back month versus front month volatility, it upticked today to about 23%. So, so meaning that back month is uh, back month volatility is about 23% higher than the VIX itself as the VIX continues to get crushed. I do want to call out um, these two gaps here on the weekly time frame dating back to 2020. One of them was just recently filled. I looked back at my old charts and I was like, oh, wow, it actually filled. So we closed today under the 14 handle there on VIX and it did fill this gap and we still have one beneath us. And to be honest, we have actually one from a while ago sitting at around 45. That's the only gap um, that's you know significantly high above us. If we take a look at the sailor to shift tool, still on a buy signal, backed off a little bit today because Bitcoin itself backed off today. It's consolidating its prior run. It's been quite volatile. So no trigger yet, but we're still within the realm of potentially getting a real trigger. I will explain now what the trigger actually is. So the signal flipped. So that's positive, right? Some people like to front run it. Some don't. Um, and then the trigger means that come the next weekly candle. So wherever we close, right, when new candle is going to open up and then that candle has to take the high out of the prior weekly candle. And then that is the official quote unquote buy signal um, based on the strategy that I use for the sailor to shift tool. Now, I just want to show you a crypto equity micro strategy. So if we do get a buy signal, okay, and we get it's confirmed, or if you want a front run or whatever, you can look at crypto equities. You can see we have a high, a lower high, a lower high, but really what you see is price expanded and now it's contracting. So if you are bullish and we get a buy signal and you get outside of 300 and you know that could be where volatility plays in your favor to the upside. Now, if it starts breaking down and we, we don't get a confirmed sell signal, obviously you wanna have, you know, designated risk of where you'd potentially get out of the trade. So that could be right here. You could give yourself more of a zone, um, whatever the case may be. But I wanted to call out that, yeah, we 
had a big uh, bullish engulfing candle yesterday. Today, we just kind of pulled back in a little bit overall in this uh, wedging type structure. So something to pay attention to moving forward. And by the way, there's there's all kinds of crypto equities that are looking like this. M-A-R-A, R-I-O-T, H-U-T, right? There's a bunch of different setups. So it would be, you know, it'd be awesome if we actually get an official signal and we can potentially see price move. But just remember, just because it gives you, you know, potentially good setups doesn't mean that they always plan out. So it's always focus on risk first. Commodities. Okay, Bitcoin, you can just see it pulled in today, right? We had a big bullish day yesterday, came down. So it's just a bunch of chop right now as it's kind of hanging underneath the 50 and the 20 day moving average. So we'll see here how that kind of sets itself up. Gold came off today, 1.17%. So we're seeing some volatility there down $23, but still holding within just this breakout of this wedge structure. So we'll see here, you know, if we start getting below that 1925 to be a little bit more cautious. Silver, this is gonna be an interesting one. So silver, we're kind of just flagging right here underneath the 50 day. The uh, price percent oscillator was curling over and today was on a pretty big volume day. It was looking pretty bullish and then it completely reversed on its face. And I was looking at a lot of miners, well, a few miners, and I traded into them today and they were up about 4% just to come back and fall about 4%. So I had to get out of the, I got in the position, took a little profits, then got out of the position to lose a little bit of profits. Okay, so, I, and I wanna tell you and show you what, and why it's so important to pay attention to silver too, because the correlation between silver and miners, go look at this, watch, this is silver, and I'm gonna overlay the GDX. Silver, GDX, the black is the GDX, so watch silver, GDX, silver, GDX. It's the same chart, practically. So if silver starts moving up, chances are, you know, miners are going to do the same thing. If you're bullish silver, you're typically bullish miners. So like I said, pretty crazy correlation right there, okay. We're gonna take a look at copper. Copper was down slightly on the day. Shooting star candle on a move up. So if copper starts backing off, not the greatest sign for Dr. Copper. Uh, oil also, right, bullish day to day. Helped out with the energy names, right? We're following through on that long tail right there. So if it starts moving up further, that's gonna be positive for energy names. If it starts coming down, just be a little bit more cautious there, which could also potentially hurt the IWM, which we priorly uh, discussed as it's reaching into some extended levels. Bonds and yields. This one took up to the top end of the channel right here, up 2.3%, closing at basically getting the 10-year at 3.78. Wow, this is pretty crazy because if we start breaking out, right, it's not the greatest for growth stocks. You actually felt that one today, right? So a pretty strong day over here in the 10-year yield, and then you actually felt the the movement in the queues and those big tech stocks. This move, it, it hardly even touched it, and that could be because the AI kind of, you know, the NVIDIA came out with their earnings, everyone followed. But now since that's over, now if we get a stronger move here, just be aware that could be a bad thing, not only for growth, but obviously bonds, right? So bonds, the TLT came off 1.48% today, still overall in a sideways choppy range. To be more bullish, I want to back above those moving averages. And then if you take a look at the yields, still inverted, 10 and 2, 77 basis points, 10 year, three month, 163 basis points as it's trying to get uninverted a little bit there, but it's you know, flatter than a pancake as it stands at this particular point in time. Let's take a look at the dollar. Also just consolidating sideways here. So no selling really stepping in. If we start breaking out, that's not a good sign either for many assets, including gold. Could very well be silver, could very well be the miners because they do have that strong correlation. It could be bad for the S&P 500 too as well. As we've seen, this goes down, this goes up. This is the S&P 500. This is the dollar. So be mindful of the intermarket things going on. That's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. See you later.